Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier and thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate the fact that you might take time out of your busy day and stop by. I'm grateful. I'm going to start with my macro thoughts because the macro uh, markets are how I like them. I've been trading quite heavily actually. But let me go back to uh, my thoughts over the weekend which was that you sell the euro. I think Thomas Jordan just told us to. Um, and I called, you know, I'd previously written about arrhythmia um, and saying that, you know, my view is the new normal is a very arrhythmic world. And when I threw, when I typed in arrhythmia, this came up for years. He'd been studying the phenomenon of chaos, of which an arrhythmic heartbeat was a perfect example. And I described the Swiss franc move last week. Um, as a rhythmic as, or a perfect example of the current arrhythmia we have in the markets. Home Thoughts, I reread a little bit of Our Man in Havana by Graham Greene, and in that book he says, You should dream more. Reality in our century is not something to be faced. Political reflections, obviously, pretty fast moving in Sana. I'll put up a photograph of a military vehicle belonging to the Shia Houthi fighters positioned on a street leading to the presidential palace during clashes in Sana. Uh, my conclusions were that the Houthis are sending to power in Yemen, um, IS attacking the border, Saudi Arabia's border that faces the Anbar province. Bashar al-Assad still in power. Saudi Arabia needs to look closely at the landscape, I think. On that note, I'll put up a tweet from Neil Doyle on Jan 5. Islamic State has issued images of what it claims is an attack on a post on the border between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. It's extraordinary, isn't it, this new digital ecosystem? China calls Snowden's stealth jet hack accusations groundless. China dismissed accusations. Uh, it stole F-35 stealth fighter plans as groundless on Monday after documents leaked by former U.S. intelligence contractor Edward Snowden on the cyber attack were published by a German magazine. The Pentagon has previously acknowledged that hackers had targeted sensitive data for defense programs such as F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, but stopped short of publicly blaming China for the F-35 breach. Um, the German magazine Der Spiegel on Saturday published a cache of Snowden documents, including a top-secret U.S. government presentation that said China stole many terabytes of data on the F-35 program, including radar designs and engine schematics. The so-called evidence that has been used to launch groundless accusations against China is completely unjustified to the foreign ministry. So that's pretty interesting. I put up a photograph of Edward Snowden uh, when he was seen in Moscow on a giant screen during a live video conference for an interview in December 2014. Um, I caught up with these remarks again, which are quite interesting when you consider them again. Francis, Francois Hollande, uh, before the events that occurred, uh, Charlie Hebdo. Mr. Putin does not want to annex eastern Ukraine, he said. What he wants is to remain influential. What Mr. Putin wants is that Ukraine not become a member of NATO. As for sanctions, Alon said, I'm not for the policy of attaining goals by making things worse. I think that sanctions must stop now. Zaid Benjamin has tweeted, Islamic State militant uh, says to Japan, pay $200 million to save these two men or this knife will become your nightmare. I'll put up the image that's been posted and you will notice it's the same fellow again. He thinks he's a jinn. His name is Abdel Majid Abdel Bari El Jinni lyricist Jinn or Jihadi John. A jinn um, uh, is a supernatural creature in Islamic mythology. Uh, the Quran says that the jinn are made of a smokeless fire but are also physical in nature, being able to interfere physically with people and objects and likewise to be acted upon. 
and visible to humans. Um, travel large distances at extreme speeds, or walk to live in remote areas like mountains, seas, trees, and the air. So he's back. The IMF have put out a pretty bearish uh, world economic outlook. First thing this morning, they've downshifted to global GDP growth to 3.5% for this year, from previously from 3.8%. And next year, they've downshifted it to 3.7% from a previous 4%. Uh, basically, they've downgraded practically everybody. The only exception is the US where they've upgraded the um, GDP outlook. Um, and uh, you will recall that I wrote on the on, yeah, on my previous piece that you know the US economy is the comeback kid uh, in 2015. I said then the Federal Reserve has stopped printing dollars. And I, have, and I think the Fed is just one headline rate away, one economic print away from hiking interest rates. And I was saying that even a quarter point hike, I think, will royal global markets big time. Uh, further to this, they're characterizing the, their outlook as cross currents, um, saying that global growth will receive a boost from lo lower oil prices, but saying this boost is projected to be more than offset by negative factors saying the United States is the only major economy for which growth projections have been raised, talking about four key developments since the release of the October 2014 WEO. First, oil prices are about 55% lower since September. Second, global growth increased broadly as expected in the third quarter of 2014. The recovery in the US was stronger than expected, but saying economic performance in all other major economies most notably Japan, fell short of expectations. Marked divergence across major economies, dollar up 6% in real terms since October. Interest rates and risk spreads have risen in many emerging market economies. You can say that again. And they've sharply downgraded sub-Saharan African GDP, and I'll come to that momentarily. If you haven't seen Christine Lagarde at MindSpeak, the link is up on Rich Wrap Ups. Do take a look. And she said many things, and she's very accomplished. And when Hannah gave her her roses, I said to Christine, that, "You know, Hannah wants to be just like you." And she says to uh, to Hannah, "Work hard, and you can be anything you want to be." Which I thought was exactly the right thing to say. Well said. Put up a photograph of her, and myself, and Hannah. Um, uh, I, did, I characterized the world last year as fluid and uncertain. The IMF is talking of cross currents, and I think that's about right. Euro 115.85. Yeah, dollar index 92.81. Japanese yen 118.32. Swissy 0.8780. Pound 151.33. Big bounce this morning, actually. Aussie 0.8184. South Korean one 1087.36. Real 265.17. The Egyptian pound officially has uh, moved down dramatically to 725.16, uh, but that was signaled by the rate cut and a number of other uh, things. I'll put up a three month chart of the dollar index. It's up, up, and away, in my view. Um, and uh, as I said, severally in August and prior to that, and after that in September, I said the point I'm making is I think the dollar has just started getting going. There will be blood in the water. There is a small window if we want to be the sharks, I said. I'll put up that photograph, the shark that I like, Euro dollar, putting up a three-month chart, last at 115.84. My target is parity. ECB policymakers will meet on January the 22nd. Euro bounced a little yesterday, got as high as 116.39, which was its biggest jump since December the 16th. Um, Jan 16th, it touched 114.60, obviously on that was in the aftermath of um, the move in the Swiss franc in part. Um, the Mario Draghi is expected to announce a 550 billion euro bond purchase program this week. Um, and uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to be enough, uh, given the current scenario. And therefore, on balance, I think the euro simply goes lower on, on every possible outcome. Crude oil, I'll put up a five-day chart, and I think that's going below $40 a barrel. Um, K 
came down quite dramatically yesterday. U.S. production climbed to 9.19 million barrels a day through Jan 9, which is the most in weekly records, and that says it all. Gold, 1276.82. It's up 7.7% 7 .7 in 2015 on a strong safe haven bid. And now we're at the, and touched the highest since September the 2nd on January 19, when it got to $1,283. Now, coming to Africa, the IMF have put out a GDP forecast for sub-Saharan Africa. They're saying in 2013, SSA it grew 5.2%, 2014, 4.8%. 2015, they are pegging at 4.9%, and 2016, 5.2%. The 2015 downgrade is minus 0.9%, 2016 is minus 0.8%, so pretty dramatic. And it took me back to that time when I was at the government of Mozambique IMF Africa Rising Conference in Maputo, and I took a photograph of the poster, which, is, which said Africa Rising, but in Portuguese, and I commented, Africa's rising, but no longer the rising tide floats all boats the way it was in 2012 and 2013. And I think this IMF downgrade is further evidence of that. I'll also put up a photograph of Pemba Island taken from the sky when we were flying back, when I was flying back that time. Zambia goes to the polls Tuesday in a tightly contested race to elect a president after a ruling party power struggle following the death of Michael Satter in office last year. The two top contenders are Defence Minister Edgar Lungu, 58, and opposition candidate Hakainda Hichilemna, 52, of the United Party for National Development at stake are the remaining two years of Satter's five-year term in Africa's second biggest copper producer. They've got lots of challenges. It was a pleasure catching up with Monica Masinde, who's Zambian worked for Dangote when I previously knew her and now she's back in Zambia manufacturing noodles. Very interesting lady and she was talking about the election and how it's going to pan out um, this morning over coffee. There was a long queue of voters when polls opened in the Lusaka suburb of Kanyama. I put up a photograph of that. Congo police fired tear gas as protests against election reform mount. Security forces fired tear gas at hundreds of rock throwing protesters in the DRC's Congo's capital on Monday. Opposition parties tried to block election reforms that may de delay elections uh, due in 2016. Smoke billowed into the air as tires burned in the streets of Kinshasa. Protests are against a revised election law that requires a national census be carried out before elections a move that could delay the polls by years and allow President Kabila to put off standing down. The bill was approved over the weekend by the lower house of parliament and was due to be examined by the Senate on Monday. Critics call the reform a constitutional coup, but the government says the census is a necessary part of the electoral process in the vast country of 65 million people. It's a vast and extraordinary place. I was in Kinshasa. It's quite an interesting story, actually, when I went, but that was some years ago, but very Kafka-esque, and I, uh, I thought to myself, the one place I'd never like to land without someone waiting to meet me would be that airport. It was just surreal. Uh, the tweets that came out yesterday um, uh, were pretty, uh, made it look pretty um, unsettling. Pierre Boisselet, uh, DRC police shoots on students in Kinshasa, two wounded. I'll put up that tweet pic. Michael Chi, despite the bullets, he tweeted, more and more youth are coming out Kinshasa on fire. And then Suhail Mugabe riot in DRC. Policemen are being killed. He was a cameraman for NTV Uganda. At least four people were killed on Monday. And this takes me back to the piece I wrote on the 10th of November 2014 when I spoke about Wagadougou's signal to sub-Saharan Africa. And in particular, I cited the Congo as an example of what could go wrong. Angola has tapped Goldman Sachs for cash as low oil price cuts revenue. Angola is turning to international lenders, including Goldman Sachs, for cash secured $250 million uh, from, from uh, Goldman Sachs and 250 from Gencorp Capital 
LLP of London in separate deals uh, within the week. Uh, they've imposed a government hiring freeze, cut outflows, um, slowed down infrastructure projects. Um, for an average price of $60 a barrel, tax revenues will decrease to $32.8 billion compared to $45 billion uh, for 2013. So you can see it's pretty enormous. There are storm clouds in the behavior of world oil demand. The borrowing from Goldman and Gemcorp follows a $2 billion loan Son and Gold took from the China Development Bank, so loading up here. Um, and I concluded by saying, you know, the oil warfare specialist, US President Barack Obama, has successfully wrestled crude oil below $50 a barrel and with that effected a chokehold on Vladimir Putin's Russia. Then I mentioned Venezuela and others as far as the field as Nigeria and Angola. This is an example. Interesting piece I came across in the Voice of Africa, um, the Voice of America. Davis predicts a geographic move as well from the traditional West African powerhouses to their East African competitors. So I think we're going to start to see the interest of business, the interest of capital, move away from what has traditionally been oil propelled economies in West Africa. Think Nigeria, think Angola, amongst others to more sort of East Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania. Yes, Tanzania is going to be a natural gas story going forward as well, and also Mozambique. So I think the center of interest will shift from West Africa increasingly to the East. Angola's president dismissed the government of the National Bank of Angola. Um, so obviously he's unhappy about something. And interestingly, the IMF, given a South Africa GDP forecast, 2.2% 2 .2 2013, 1.4% 2014, 2.1% 2015, 2.5% 2016. They've downshifted 2015 by just 0.2% uh, and uh, 2016 by 0.3%. And I think South Africa will take that dollar around 1166.47 and uh, my objective for that is 12. Egyptian pound sharply lower, 725. Foreign reserves dropped to $15.3 billion in December from $15.9 billion in the previous month. Currencies down more than 20% since Mubarak was toppled. They cut rates to 8.75% on Jan 15. Egyptian stock market remains uh, very perky. It's up 7.57% already so far this year. Uh, now, IMF have put out a Nigeria GDP forecast, which makes interesting reading. 2013, 5.4%, we know. 2014, they're estimating 6.1%. 2015, they've cut by 2.5 percentage points to 4.8%. 2016, 5.2%, cut 2 percentage points. And I think they're spot on. Dambina advisors, uh, I get their research, is predicting that retired General Muhammadu Buhari is poised to narrowly unseat in incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan. That would be an interesting development, pretty seismic actually. Um, they're including, if it happens, will be unprecedented in Nigeria's political history, they say. Nigeria's Naira fell to a record low as today a rate decision looms. I don't expect any change. It fell 3% to 190.45 before pairing losses to trade at 190.30. We see no respite over the short term. Uh, policymakers in Nigeria rely on crude for 90% of export earnings. Uh, I think the currency is headed to 220. It's down 13% in the past three months. I spoke about this on the 10th of November when I said turning to the markets in Africa, the Naira and the All Share Index have been wagadoogooed by the collapse in the price of oil. Um, on the 19th of November, I put out um, an expectation that it would go to 200. So the currency heads to 200, the central bank does not have the firepower. Um, Jan 14, I characterized the FX markets and the money markets as a false market because they've sucked out liquidity, dried up trading. Uh, Nigeria all share bounced yesterday 2.54%. It's now negative 14.09% year to date. Ghana Stock Exchange down 1.56% year to date. Sudan's inflation rate whilst remaining stubbornly high, has slowed markedly since July when it reached 46.8%. It stood at 25.6% in November. Kenya is asking the IMF for a precautionary loan of about 700 
$150 million. Armando Morales told Reuters the request was contained in a letter from the Kenyan government received by the IMF last Friday. The request will be considered by the IMF board on February 2nd, he said, adding the facility could help the East African nation deal with a range of potential shocks. They could be weather-related, they could be security-related, it could also be a change in foreign investor sentiments affecting capital inflows. Moving on, a Kenyan human rights activist, Boniface Monkey, says police tear gas school children, demonstrating against the removal of their school's playground, which was allegedly grabbed by a powerful politician. Um, uh, and I concluded by saying, because this news when it popped over the radar, went worldwide. And I said, you know, in a 24 hour always on world, this kind of thing pops up on the radar real quick and hardly bends the perception in Kenya's favor. Kenyan boy, Kenyan boy tweeted a terrified kid cornered by the police, lets it out loud, this photo will haunt someone occupied playground. Uh, the Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nakasari has apologised to pupils of Langata Road Primary School over the Monday tear gas assault. Thankfully, HFCK um, uh, have set the price of their rights issue at 30 shillings a share. Kenya shilling 91.499 uh, last. Nairobi all shares up 1.84% year to date but fell 0.56% yesterday. Mumia Sugar. Uh, through this morning and this year was up 79.48%, but it's trading limit down 10% this morning. Uchumi up 26.86% year to date. NSE 20 fell 0.51% yesterday, but remains up 1.27%. I did an interview with Bonnie Tunya, that's on Rich Wrap Ups and on the front of the website. Kenya Airways pilots and cabin crew are set to take a pay cut after the airline negotiated for a reduction in the allowances that they are paid for working outside the country. M. Shwari lending more than triples to 24 billion shillings in one year. That's extraordinary. We have so far dispersed loans amounting to 24 billion shillings. Repayment rate of 97%, which is far more impressive than the repayment rates for loans advanced by commercial banks. That point. Safaricom is targeting Nakamak Tuskies for Lipa and Pesa. Yesterday, the stock market eased off a bit, throttled back on low volume. Volumes thinned out, um, but it's considerably outperformed markets on the other side of the continent. And I think on balance that the market remains uh, uh, well supported. Thank you so much for stopping by.